Hey everyone and welcome back to The Latent Gamer. In our last video we talked about 10 very basic tips to get you started in Zombie Army 4. In today's video, we're going to talk about 12 advanced tips to incorporate in your gameplay to make you the most effective zombie slayer. On harder difficulties, with these tips you are able to deal with any situation you get yourself into. These are what I use to get through each map when I solo run on hard 4 player zombie setup and they should be very useful when a new elite difficulty gets here. So the first tip is to shoot close boxes. There are times when you are in the middle of a swarm and you see a box that possibly contains a heavy weapon, weapon attachment or grenades. But instead of running towards it and then take half a second to interact with it, you can shoot it from a distance to see what's inside before going towards it. This is faster and it helps with your decision making when being chased by zombies. The next tip is to try and kill as much zombies as you can with headshots. And yeah, I know headshots are cool and it feels satisfying when you get them, but the main reason we all go for headshots is because one headshot kills, no matter the difficulty. But that's not the reason this tip is here. If you're not going for headshots or critical hits, then you're not being effective and are 100% doing double the work. Headshots up zombies from resurrecting, so if you're not aiming for the head, then you are killing zombies you already killed. And it gets worse because if you have a necromancer in the area or a commander then you're probably going to get destroyed because at this point the commander does the same thing as a necromancer but worse because he enrages them the third tip is to save heavy weapons for heavy zombies the gunner the butcher the flamer these zombies are very difficult to take down alone and on harder difficulties, apart from being bombarded by grunts, you'll have to fight more than one of these heavies at the same time. It can be more than one of the same zombie or a mix and the easiest way to get rid of them is to save any heavy weapon you have because these weapons are the fastest and most effective to take out heavy zombies on any difficulty. The fourth tip is to use takedowns for invulnerability. There are times when you are on the brink of death or being bombarded by creepers or suiciders. One way to get out of this is to use the invulnerability frames on your takedowns. This is extremely useful, you get health from it and it definitely gives you time to notice an escape. So armor giants are not the scary zombies in this game and they are not the hardest to kill but what they do is waste your bullets if you don't pay attention when taking them out. The first time I encountered this zombie, I spread out the armor and just shredded the zombie. But that was a noob thing to do, and it was a waste of bullets and not the most effective way to dispose of it. Then I quickly realized that you can kill the zombie with one takedown, but what about the rest of them? The most effective way to get rid of the zombie is to aim at the exposed areas such as the neck, the ribcage or the groin, or in some cases you can remove the helmet with one or two shots with the moss in the gaunt, high powered slugs or the Webley Mark VI. Now, in tip number 3, I mentioned that you should save your heavy weapons to take down heavy zombies, but what if, like in most cases, you probably won't have a heavy weapon, what then? Well, the most effective method I know is to use weapon focus and focus your head. The slow time will help with zombies who like to move around like the butcher, and once you narrow your vision to their head, the reduced bullet spread and recoil should get the job done with one or one and a half clip. In the seventh tip, we're going to talk about using suiciders to your advantage. At first, suiciders can be seen as a problem because they are very annoying and they do a lot of damage. But once you learn how to use them to your advantage, when you hear them running towards you, you should start seeing this as an opportunity to cut down the horde. Here are six different ways to take out suiciders. The first is very simple. If you have a bait grenade, just ensure the mod is set to attract suiciders, toss it and they'll do the rest. The second method is simply shooting the bombs and it will detonate instantly. Third, you can shoot them in the legs and the bomb will detonate a few seconds after. The fourth method is to wait until they get close and just back off. The fifth is to use your takedown if they are right in your face and the sixth is to use your special melee attack electric fist. If it's one suicider, this will launch it away but if it's more than one, the electric fist will short circuit all suiciders in range and explode after a few seconds. The 8th tip 
is to use your special melee attack when getting cornered and you think it's over. Your special melee attack does two things. It gives you invulnerability and it creates openings. This is your escape button and I usually use it with my takedowns. So the next time you are being suffocated by zombies, just hit this button and get the hell out of dodge. Okay, so let's talk about the most annoying zombie in this game. For the new guy, the screamers are pretty scary in this game because you can literally use all of your bullets in all of your guns and not kill this monster. Yeah, the weak spot is on its back, but it rushes down so much it's hard to breathe sometimes. Luckily, you can do a takedown on the zombie just like any other. Zombie tanks and half trucks are a pretty interesting concept in this game, but they can be tough to deal with in the beginning. When I first started, I sprayed the red areas with my machine gun or shotgun or heavy gun if I have one. This would always leave me out of ammo because I did the most newbie thing I could think of. Here are two effective ways to get rid of the zombie tanks and half trucks. First, you can use a well placed artillery strike if you have one. Just time this correctly and the war machine will be destroyed in a matter of seconds. The second method is simply to plant a mine in the road. If you have second detonation equipped, this should take care of it. But if not, this should stop the tank from moving and you can finish it off with your gun. So, we all know that you get healed from divine grenades unless you are Hector. They're very useful and we like to keep them when we can for that extra healing. But the applications of the divine grenades is a lot more effective when you use them offensively. Divine grenades allow you to deal 2 times the damage to zombies which stacks if you are using a divine weapon. So you are looking at about 3 times the damage with the M1 carbine, the M1911 or the Tommy gun. You deal 2 times the damage with melee attacks so depending on your weapon mod, you can either be knocking down zombies or dismembering them. And lastly, it comes in raid zombies. Look into this, incorporate it in your playstyle if you aren't already because it will be very useful or valuable on harder difficulties. Tip number 12 is simple. If you haven't started already, start now. You need to create builds. After going through this game a few times, you should understand what to expect on each map and by the time you reach prestige rank 1, you should have all the essential stuff unlocked. Learn each character's strengths and weaknesses, understand how each perk works and start creating builds tailored for each map. This will make your playthrough a lot smoother and efficient and you will just have an overall better zombie army experience. These are the 12 tips I use to have a better gaming experience everyone and I will be using them on the upcoming Elite difficulty. If there is anything I missed or anything you would add, please let us know in the comment section down below. Give this video a like, subscribe and ring that bell to always be notified. I'll see you in the next video.